Hello everyone and welcome to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Foran and this here is a guide on how to play Bohemia in the new Emperor update and also talking about the Hussite faith and stuff. So as Bohemia you start off in a very interesting position. Um, you are one of the largest nations in the HRE and you have this one two wonderful little vassals over here who actually help you quite a lot early game with seven troops. However, you're going to want to er annex them early on to get control of that lovely development. So, opening moves for Bohemia. Um, you start off surrounded by potential allies and potential enemies. Um, as you can see in this one, which... By the way, I've played this game to about 1810 as Bohemia. And this is only day two of launch, so guess what I spent yesterday doing? Um, you start off with enemies around you. Um, Usually when I run this, I find that Hungary is usually one of your rivals, and um, sometimes Austria is your rival. Um, usually I find Poland, Brandenburg, Saxony, and Austria to be your most reliable allies. Denmark sometimes still rivals you, otherwise it's usually another large nation. So um, I recommend you rival at least Hungary because at some point you get claims on their lands and unless they've fallen under control of Austria you're going to want to invade them because of your mission tree but we'll get to that in a minute. So um, as Bohemia you start Catholic. Now this is an important thing because you also have the Hussite faith in your lands. However you cannot simply go and embrace Hussite. You do have to go through an event chain in order to convert to Hussite. However, the choice of going Catholic or going Hussite is one of the larger decisions you're going to make early game as Bohemia, besides getting allies. Um, since you're in the HRE, you could probably ally Austria. If you don't ally Austria, try to ally Poland. Basically, you're going to need the weight of one to overpower the other. And since you get missions to basically expand in all directions as Bohemia, having a strong ally is going to come in handy. Especially if you're going to switch to the Hussite faith. If you're going to switch to the Hussite faith, all of these lovely same religion as me is going to drop to negative 40 to bordering um, heretic religion. Um, so you're going to lose allies if you're not careful. So if you're going to switch to Hussite, make sure that you ally somebody really good like Austria and then improve relations with them really quickly. Um, as Bohemia, you also start in an interregum. Um, basically, the former king of Austria, Hungary, Bohemia, died fighting the Ottomans along with the Polish king, which explains why both Poland, Bohemia, and Hungary all start in an interregum period. Austria, in fact, has a ruler, which makes them kind of annoyingly strong early on. However, you don't start off with a bad basically regency council here you start off with the 2221 which is six monarch points it's not terrible so the first thing you're going to want to do is decide are you going catholic or are you going hussite because this is key if you want to go catholic and reform the empire you can go down this tree here where you can humiliate austria do the electorate of brandenburg electorate of saxony and basically reform the empire now Sounds good, and your question is, why can't I do that? Is Hussite? Well, because of the dominant faith. Only Catholic rulers are eligible to become emperor. If you become Hussite, you are not eligible to become emperor. And in fact, you're not also eligible to become emperor after the Protestant Reformation occurs. See the problem? Um, the only hope of you having to get on the empire, as far as I know, there might be some way to trick it, is to get religious peace within the empire during the basic whole religious war incident with the Protestant Reformation, which is a bit tricky and I haven't figured out the best method of doing that, so I'm not going to put this here. If I do, I'll put it in the comments below. Um, but basically, you have to make that decision and you have to make that decision relatively early on because it's going to guide how you play. If you want to play Hussite, you get to go down this tree over here. These three, if you want to go Catholic and expand through the Empire, you can go down this way. Obviously, some of these are rather tricky to do to pull off, but it's important to think about it. So if you want to go Hussite, you have to wait until you get a new monarch on the throne. And then after a little while, there'll be an event called the Return of the Hussites. 
I basically have a choice between going with the radical Hussites or staying true to the Catholic faith, basically. Um, that choice doesn't matter. The first event doesn't matter. The key is you get Jan Hus on the throne. So that's the decision you want to take. Once you get Jan Hus on the throne, there'll be an event where you get three choices. You get support the Hussites, have Hus stay loyal to the Hus... Uh, not Jan Hus, what am I saying? Sorry, you get... Um, and I know people from Bohemia don't like this pronunciation, but it's the only way I know how to do it. Podebrand. I know it's wrong. Podebrand basically comes, and he can either go completely Hussite, he can stay Hussite, but his country will stay Catholic, which causes problems, or he can go completely Catholic. And that's the decision that makes. If you want to go Hussite, you got to go to support Hussite completely, and you'll change to Hussite. If you want to go the middle way, you stay Catholic, but the Hussites don't get exterminated, and there's more events leading off of that. I haven't tested them all. Um, if you go Catholic, you're going to also have a Hussite revolt later on, um, but then you'll be able to stay Catholic as far as I'm aware. I don't know if there's any specific events forcing you, because in my game, I went Hussite. So um, once you do that, though, you want to take this event, which gets you reduced Catholicism or reform desire, gets you popal influence, which actually is kind of interesting if you think about it. Because, uh, I guess this is assuming I stay Catholic. Because this is different if you go Hussite. And I'll show you what happens when you go Hussite. I've got um, a middle save on that. So before we get to that, though, we will go down the Bohemian ideas. They haven't changed, as far as I'm aware, really, at all. So you've got negative 10 advisor costs, imperial growth modifier, which basically is to incentivize you to stay Catholic, have good advisors, and promote imperial unity. Uh, you've got the Compacta of Prague, which is very nice. Tolerance of Heretics plus three. If you're Catholic, it will just make you just tolerant of Protestantism and Hussite and Reformed and Anglican. But, oh, and Orthodox, but you're not going to run into Orthodox problems unless you go East. So that's a good one, and it's definitely useful to stabilizing your country if you stay Catholic. Um, if you stay Protestant, it stabilizes your country even more because you lose this negative one tolerance of heretics from being Catholic. Um, so they basically become completely tolerant of Catholics if you go Protestant or Hussite, which is kind of strange. Uh, then you got elective monarchy plus one yearly legitimacy. Really nice bonus. Keeps your country nice and stable. You can change your dynasty, do personal union stuff a little bit easier. Um, Wagenberg, basically Wagenforts, 10% infantry combat ability, negative 5 shock damage received. That is really good, and it does stack with the Hussite faith bonus, which I will show you later. Then you've got Letter of Majesty, negative 1 unrest, negative 10% tech cost, which is really good. It'll allow you to basically keep up in tech while developing lands. Then you got negative 10% stability cost modifier, which is good, but you really shouldn't be losing that much stability if you play the game right. And Czech nationalism, which is kind of nice. Cheaper hiring of advisors with the ruler's culture. And to cap it all off, you get one land leader fire, which is actually pretty good late game, especially if you go somewhere like offensive ideas, because then you have plus two land leader fire, fire, which is awesome. So those are their ideas. Um, I'll get into the missions once I have loaded up the other save. So see you in a second. Okay, here we are. So this is a backup save I made in 1474 as Bohemia, as Hussite Bohemia. First off, can we remark on the fact that the Hussite is just a really strange color. So if we go and look at our missions, you'll see that what they have are different. So you have Return of the Hussites here, Reduce Missionary Maintenance Cost, which is really good. Um, because you have to manually convert the rest of Aust uh, the rest of Bohemia. I think you had four Hussite provinces at the beginning or something. Uh, you have to convert all the land you own in order to complete this mission. So remember how we had those nice two little vassals here? Don't annex them until you have converted Bohemia. It will make your life a lot easier. However, once you do convert Bohemia, and it will tell you basically it's this whole area here you have to make Hussite, you get an event that gives you a Hussite Center of Reformation in Prague. 
which functions just like all the other centers of reformation. However, I notice a downside with it, because unlike Reformed and unlike Protestant, you have one center. You do get it relatively early on, but it doesn't tend to convert enough land I found to actually flip countries. I played a couple hundred years after this, and no country converted to Hussite that I didn't force them to do. So that's a bit of a downside. Um, once the Reformed faith occurs, you can also do this one, which is the Defenstrations of Prague. We get one diplomatic reputation and plus one missionary strength versus heretics, which is very good because you're going to want to convert things. Uh, once you integrate your Silesian vassals, you get improved relations, you get a permanent claim on the Slovakian region. Remember how I was saying you probably don't want to ally Hungary? This is why. The game wants you to invade them. So if you invade them and you conquer this region, you get a restoration of union on Hungary. Just remember that Hungary tends to fall under the control of Austria. Um, if you're lucky and they don't, remember they always ally Austria and they have Croatia as a junior partner. This is why you either need Austria or hopefully the better choice is actually Poland to help you beat Hungary. Now you also have another mission called Polish Diplomacy, which is actually relatively easy to do. You have to have uh, Z Podebrand, sorry about the pronunciation, as a dynasty and Poland has to be either your rival or has to have that your dynasty on their throne. So you've got an option to do this, and then you can do restoration of union on Poland. Remember, however, that Poland doesn't have just 32,000. Usually they have Lithuania's 39,000. So be aware that at least you have Austria-Hungary on your side, trying to beat Poland-Lithuania is really hard. So once you do that, you have the option of going even further into Poland, basically. You have to have you either have to conquer it from them or you have to get them as your subject if you do you get permanent claims on land up here um, which basically is sending you after the knights for them uh, if you do all of that those are the lands you need to own or have poland own you get land of our forefathers one prestige and one yearly legitimacy which is nice but you don't really need the legitimacy beyond that you can form the bohemian commonwealth which, if you do all the Pomeranian Conquest, Hungarian Union, and Electorate of Saxony missions, you can get Bohemian Commonwealth, which will make diplomatic annexation to the end of the game much cheaper, which is awesome. Remember how I said you really don't necessarily want to go down this tree if you go Hussite? You can still go down this tree, but as far as I'm aware, they are not going to vote for you because you're still not eligible to be the Emperor. So it's rather tricky. Um... But you can do these missions, basically you turn them into a subject, and then you've got a choice of an event, I won't spoil it for you, but it's kind of cool, of what you want to do with Saxony. Um, if you also stay Catholic, you can go down this tree here, which is your standard HRE one. Over here is something a little bit interesting, you've got the Bohemian Crystal event. Basically, turn this province 20 development, put a workshop there, you get a Bohemian Crystal event. I obviously haven't done it in this save file, so... Once you've done that, if you put a Cathedral University Capital, you get some really nice development going on in a couple of your provinces. You get nine development in two provinces, which is really awesome. Um, and then if you do this, which involves putting those to development 20, getting the Enlightenment, and have a manufactory, you get Burgonium reforms. Probably got that wrong. Production efficiency till the end of the game, which is relatively awesome. So on the other tree, if you go down the Hungarian Union tree, which is tough to do because you have to beat usually Austria-Hungary and Croatia, unless Croatia's gone into Hungary by that time, which makes Hungary a little easier to conquer, but larger. Um, you get a claim on Austria, which is basically sending you after Austria then. So you don't want to invade Austria early on as Bohemia anymore. You want to invade Hungary or Poland early on, or Brandenburg, actually, is the other option. Um, but you do want to fight Austria so you can humiliate them. But then you can basically force Brandenburg to be your vassal, or Saxony to be your vassal, and keep going down this train of events. Um, once you do the Hungarian Union, you get Protect Against Turks. Basically, it wants you to invade the Ottomans. By the way, by that time, in order to do this, you're going to own Hungary, and you probably should own Poland-Lithuania. So... <laughs> You know, you'd think that would make beating the Ottomans easy. In my game, it was still a slog, so be very careful about that. 
Uh, if you do manage to do all of that and you get those lands, you get Revenge for Nicopolis, which just gives you 50 power projection, which you should already have. It's not particularly great. Now over here under the Electorate of Saxony, if you've also got the Imperial Ambition, which is kind of awesome, but you do have to be Catholic to become Emperor at the moment. Um, you also have to have the Perpetual Diet done, and you have to have completed those other two missions. You get an Imperial Growth Modifier plus 20. You have a plus 10 from your ideas. So you can actually reform the empire rather quickly. And at the end, you have peace in Europe. If you own, if in the HRE, there are 250 in your emperor, you get peace in Europe, which gives your current ruler plus one diplomacy. You get years of separatism reduced and plus one monarch diplomatic skill for the rest of the game. Really strong if you can pull it off. However, by the time you've pulled that off, you should already be super, super strong anyway so the dipple point is not overwhelmingly needed now for your ideas you have different ideas what you can do i particularly found innovative ideas to be the first best choice for these guys messing around on it because once you form kohasai as you'll see everybody dislikes you basically or it doesn't dislike you but trying to get allies is really hard um you're gonna kind of stuck here. When I when I was playing, as you can see, that Brand while Brandenburg was invadable, they were my ally. Saxony was invadable, but they were my ally. Austria Hungary had all of this. Poland Lithuania was that. And basically, you can't really ally people like France or Burgundy. They tend not to. Uh... Also, by the way, in this game, uh, Burgundy was a junior partner of France. It's not too easy to invade and conquer them. So. Be aware that expansion options are semi-limited. Uh, in this game, I actually found more success slowly invading the central HRE because most of these countries, you'll see these guys have allies, but you can outnumber them relatively easy um, as long as you don't accidentally trigger Austria, which is, you know, 46,000. So take that away and we could easily win that war. Um, that's basically the way it goes. Now, to look at the Hussite faith. So, Hussite gives you, initially, two missionary strengths versus heretics. Remember, you can get an additional one by once the reform, reform faith, I believe it's the reform faith, is available. So that gives you three missionary strengths with heretics, which is really good. And you get negative five shock damage received, which goes in combination with your negative five shock damage received here. So you have negative 10 shock damage. So early on, your armies, I say relatively early on, um, your armies are really good early game when shock is more of a decider than fire. Um, and then obviously you get fire later on, which helps. Um, let's see. So, Church of Bohemia functions pretty much like Protestantism. You've got church power, you get it per month based off your monarch points, and reduced if you have any other religions in your lands. Here are the aspects of faith. Clerical poverty. Negative 15 stability cost, negative 10 clergy influence. If you take that, you can stack it with this, get negative 25 stability cost. If you went religious ideas, you would have negative 50 stability cost. Basically, Bohemia is meant to be a really stable nation for the whole game. It's kind of their design concept. You've got bread and wine here, tolerance of true faith plus one, which is nice, I guess. You shouldn't really have any true faith rebellions anyway. Uh, but you do get goods produce modifier plus five, which is really the only way to get like money as the Hussites. All these other ones don't actually give you any money, which is, I think it's weaker than Protestantism in some ways due to that. However, you do get this war score cost versus other religions, negative 10. Stack that with the Age of Reformation bonus and you can take tons of land relatively cheaply. Um, still have to deal with aggressive expansion now. Uh, you've got the Adamite services, which, by the way, the description is very interesting because the people decide that they are naked in church services, which is strange. Obviously, it's not in the game, but wow. Uh, you get cultural conversion cost 20, which is kind of nice. Um, goes relatively well with the cultural conversion from r religious ideas. Basically, if you take religious ideas, you can really get a lot of strong bonuses. But why would you double up on bonuses you have when you can go into other ones and still have good conversion and culture conversion? It's up to you. Um, I didn't find it to be overwhelmingly great. This one's interesting. Pacifism. Approve relations plus 30. Stability hit declare war plus 1. Uh, you declare war, you lose a stability if you take it. However, you can 
chain as change aspects of faith. So early on, when you form, uh, when you change into Hussite Bohemia, it might be worth taking this if you've got dangerous allies or enemies on your borders, just to calm everybody down. Basically, you invade, conquer a lot of land, swap to this, improve relations to lower the aggressive expansion and get rid of any coalitions, take it away, invade, put it back on, and repeat. It's actually more useful than it seems. Um, you just got to remember not to declare war while you have it on. I made that mistake a couple times and it does set you back. This one might be my favorite one. Punishment of Sins, Yearly Corruption, negative 0.05. Nobility Influence, negative 10%. Influence is kind of irrelevant. It's more the corruption. Basically, what you could do is if you've got, you know, two stability or one stability and punishment of sins, you can basically make it so you don't have to um, root out corruption at all, which can save you a good amount of money. Um, it'll save you money when you expand and you have corruption from events. This one's nice. Regular defenstrations. Harsh treatment costs negative 33%. Really good for getting absolutism in the age of absolutism, especially with the age bonus. Really simple to get absolutism. This one's nice, plus 20 manpower. Uh, if you're fighting lots of people, you're going to need it. Bohemia doesn't have the biggest manpower pool, so it's pretty handy. This one I like, Orphan Hit Mounds. Yearly army tradition decay, negative one. With the nerf to army traditions, it's pretty good. Then you've got freedom to preach, plus one tolerance of heretics plus 10 religious unity. Okay, so that's the Bohemian religion stuff explained. Um, I didn't find this one particularly useful, freedom to preach in the whole game. Um, some people might say it's good. I didn't find it that useful. Honestly, I found Hussite a little lackluster compared to what I thought it would. It's good if you're able to expand and expand quickly. War score, harsh treatment, manpower, army tradition decay as well as the improved relations, but I don't know, I, I still might pick Protestantism over it for the average country. Besides, you can only easily get it as Bohemia. I'm sure you could probably get it for another country, invade this land, pop rebels, convert your country, but why would you? It's easier to either just stick around and go pro Protestant later. I found the AI tends to not go Hussite, they tend to reconcile with the Catholic Church, which means Hussite disappears from the game relatively quickly unless you're bohemia and actually focus it so in terms of estates because this is the new you know mechanic introduced an emperor i found the easiest thing to do was instantly go through and put on all the plus one monarch points it does ruin your land you control and you get some nasty penalties early on however if you play correctly as bohemia you really shouldn't have any early game problems. You're not going to be able to invade Austria early on unless you've somehow managed to ally Venice and Hungary and they both hate Austria. So there's that. Uh, I didn't find it was that easy to invade Poland early on because they have Lithuania. I suppose if they don't get Lithuania it might be easier to invade them and take them over. Things to consider. Um, I guess. <laughs> I, so anyway, I found that the immense instability you get from estates, like you go down to like 5% crown land, is not really an issue. Uh, you want to seize the land pretty regularly. I found most of the rebels that pop up are like 1 to 2k. So I both converted to Hussite, converted the country, dealt with the little religious rebels, and offended all my estates basically immediately and had two three thousand little rebellions pop up every once in a while wasn't hard wasn't able to expand obviously and my economy took a hit but remember over here in cheb you do have a gold mine and you should develop it you, there's two mi gold mines in the hre and you've got one of them and you want to use it um, basically you want to finance most your empire off your gold mine you'll see i'm getting more money from that currently than i am from taxation and it's not even fully developed the other thing to realize is, as Bohemia, you're also going to get the Renaissance relatively slowly. As you can see, I haven't gotten it yet in this save file. Um, but it's probably worth building up Bohemia. You do get some events to improve Bohemia. Um, Prague, especially from nobles, it's really useful if your nobles like upping Prague once you've upgraded it. So once you build it, I wouldn't actually recommend putting a church or marketplace in there until you get the mission to do so. 
because um, it'll get you, it'll save you a hundred some on monarch points. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of monarch points. The reason I went innovative is because of the instability early on, and the fact that it stacks 10% technology with 10%. You've got a pretty good amount of Monarch point gain early on, unless you're expanding rapidly, which as the Hussites, you really can't. So if you're Catholic, you can be expansionist. If you're Hussite, you got to delay a little bit unless you get really lucky. Remember, these guides are for the average player, not for like pro level players, because they would declare war constantly and conquer half of Europe using Bohemia's missions. Um, Let's see. So that's why I went innovative. I'd probably consider going... I might consider going defensive for the next ones, just to get some morale, because Bohemia really doesn't have discipline, and it doesn't really have morale. So you need to take one of them, and early on, if you're going to use the shock damage reduction, probably going to want the morale, because morale is stronger early on. Defensive ideas are weaker, um, now that they've changed the Battlefield Commission stuff from one yearly army tradition to army tradition from battles. Um, but you do have reduced decay, so pretty good. Plus you have some half-decent defensive forts. Uh, you can actually afford a few. Plus you're surrounded, so having additional defense wouldn't be the worst thing. Uh, if you're really going offensive, going offensive ideas would be the way to go. Siege, better leaders, some uh, discipline. Don't think it's probably worth going aristocratic ideas on Bohemia. Um, it might be stack, stack it negative two yearly army tradition decay. It's worth considering. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of aristocratic ideas. Quantity ideas, not to take early game. You just can't afford a full army and the benefits are stronger later on. Obviously you don't have any naval stuff, um, which makes quality ideas less than ideal early on, just because you have to waste three ideas on this. However, it does give you really good infantry troops and some discipline later on and some army tradition decay. Um, if you're going to pick other ideas, um, religious ideas might be worth considering if you really want to double down into the whole Hussite mentality and basically culturally convert everything to um, Bohemian and Czech. Sorry, Czech. And uh, really convert things. However, it is important to note that your center of reformation tends to convert your own lands first. So like when I took over this province here, um, the center of reformation switched over once it was done and converted it for me. So if you expand slowly, use the center of reformation, you'll do pretty well. Um, admin ideas, obviously if you're expanding. However, as Bohemia, you really shouldn't be conquering that much because of your mission trees, which allow you to get subjects easier. Saxony, Brandenburg, Union, Poland, Union, to Hungary. Um, it's more beneficial not to take it early on, unlike most nations. Unless, of course, you're doing what I was doing, which is invading here. In which case, I did take it as my third idea. Humanist ideas you could take if you want to be unbelievably tolerant. I don't know why you would. You're already tolerant of heretics. Um, it's the heathens, which you really shouldn't have to deal with, that you're not tolerant of. Uh, you're not going to be able to colonize, so that's the two colonial ideas out. Economic wouldn't be bad if you're playing tall, just fortifying Hussite Bohemia, but you really shouldn't be. The mission tree wants you to conquer people. I suppose if you don't get good allies, it's worth it. Espionage ideas actually is really good on Bohemia, and I think I took it as my second idea, or fourth idea, I can't remember now. Mainly because since you're Hussite and you're in the HRE, expanding the HRE gives you an even bigger penalty. What most people don't realize about aggressive expansion is being of a re different religious group increases the aggressive expansion you get for everybody in that religious group. You're Hussite, they're Catholic, there's a big penalty there. 20% reduction is really good. It'll make expanding much safer for you. Obviously, if you're pro player, pretty, feel free to ignore that because you will manage AE anyway. But for other people, pretty good. Stack it with the yearly corruption. You would basically don't have to worry about corruption for the rest of the game as Hussite Bohemia. Um, and you can also fabricate claims for subjects, which isn't bad because you're going to get a few subjects. Diplomatic ideas might actually be relatively good on Bohemia if you're having trouble keeping alliances and you want to take more land. It stacks, the provincial war scores cost stacks really well with the 
Age of Reformation bonus and the bonus from the Hussite ideas. Um, basically, provinces are like 40% cheaper, I think. Maybe a little bit more. 50? 45? I haven't actually bothered to calculate it, but it's pretty good. Trade ideas, probably not that useful um, in single player. Might be more useful in multiplayer. You're not going to get a ton of trade, though. You're kind of in the middle of Europe, and most trade goes through the oceans. Uh, Maritime's useless. Influence ideas I didn't find needed, um, mainly because you should be able to manage your subjects without it. Uh, if you're having trouble, though, Liberty Desire from subjects is handy, plus the cheaper annexation. If you're annexing your unions, you really should let them automatically annex from, you know, chance by getting diplomatic reputation. But, you know, if you're in that, into annexing unions relatively early on, rather than leveraging their ridiculously strong strengths to help you expand, go for influence ideas once you get some subjects. Don't take it before you get Poland or Hungary or even Saxony and Brandenburg. That's the ideas. That's the religion. The starting ideas, you either want to ally Lithuania, oh, sorry, Austria or Poland-Lithuania or Brandenburg and Saxony. In this game, I actually had an alliance with Austria, but because I'm a neighboring heretic religion, they instantly got rid of that. So, um, let's see. Anything else you could want to know? Um, Podebrand starts out with one missionary strength, which does help convert your lands. Converting your lands is what you should be doing for like the first 10, 15 years of the game. Uh, remember, if you can put on edicts, put on edicts. Two missionary strength, Podebrand one. If you're lucky, you get another plus two. You can get the Center of Reformation like 1460, which gives you almost 40 years of uninterrupted Reformation until the other centers appear. By the way, these things last for a long time. So you don't have to worry about them getting converted back until the Reformation occurs, which is nice to know. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, you have no unique reforms as Bohemia. Basically, go for absolutism. I took strength and noble privileges over tax, just because with the gold mine, you shouldn't be hurting for money, but you're going to hurt for manpower since mercs, mercen mercenaries were weakened. Um, you should also manage to get a lot of reform relatively fast because you shouldn't be taking a lot of land early on, especially if you're going for unions, um, which means you should be able to get down here relatively quickly. Uh, let's see what else. So basically, I found just getting the estates under control and then just seizing land, dealing with any revolts. Um, let's see. You don't lose all your prestige when you convert, unlike going to Protestantism, which makes patronage of the arts unuseful on these guys. So, um, Let's see. Anything else in the world you could possibly need to know offhand? Not really. This is more for Hussite Bohemia. If you're Catholic Bohemia, you're going to basically play like you're Austria in some ways. Get electors to vote for you, get unions, stay emperor, get a ridiculous amount of imperial growth authority, plus 30. Um, you can really go whatever method you want to for the HRE. I tend to think centralization is still stronger than decentralization. Um, it's really up to you though. You're going to be really huge if you get Poland and Hungary and Lithuania and Brandenburg and Saxony, so you could go decentralized. I'd recommend if you're going Catholic Bohemia, you go centralized though. Make them all your subject, do vassal swarms, etc. You are an elector though. Um, if you really want to weaken Austria, you'll change your vote to whichever of the other ones is winning and vote for them. So like, Vote for Anaholt, because they're going to be a very weak emperor, which will make expanding in the HRE as a Hussite much easier than if you have to deal with Austria demanding unlawful territory and potentially attacking you. Um, one other thing before I forget is the Ottomans actually tend to be a half-decent ally for Bohemia. Once you get stronger, they tend to fight wars and rival Hungary-Austria, so it might be a viable ally for you thing to watch out for, though, is if you ally them and you get the Union over Hungary, they're going to instantly break the alliance for the land, basically, unless somehow you've managed to get, like, 80 or 90 favors. Uh, let's see, anything else to look at? Uh, they're pretty easy to do other stuff. You cannot form Germany as them, though. Yeah, 
That's kind of frustrating. It's impossible to form Germany as them because they are Czech. Yeah. So just be aware that Czech does not count as a German culture, nor does Silesian, nor does Sorbian up here. So if you want to do Czech and Slovakia or Bohemia into Germany, you're going to have to culture convert tags, um, which is not the subject of this video. So anyway, hopefully you guys like that. If I find anything more out about Bohemia, like any specific cool little strats, I'll try and put them below in the comments. Feel free to leave your constructive comments down there. Any tips and tricks you found handling Imperial incidents and stuff. Or anything I got wrong. I could easily get it wrong. I played through it once. I haven't played through it again yet, so I might have missed stuff. So, um, outside of that, you do have a couple achievements as Bohemia. You have checks and balances, which is relatively easy to do. Get over 50 crown land. You're going to need like more like 70 crown land. And then give two privileges to each estate. And then you get it. It's not hard at all. As you can see, I already have two granted to the burgers. Just the monthly one gives you one. You give them more happiness and you've got it nailed. Um, you also have... But you can compulsorily convert to do the Great Moravia, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Um, and then there's also the Bohemians for an achievement, as Bohemia owned Dublin as a core province, which, of course, is a little bit of work. But if you're massive, you can pull it off without much trouble. So that is a quick Bohemia Hussite guide and review, basically. Um, good. I don't know if it's better than Protestantism. Protestantism, unless you're expanding rapidly. Basically, the best of the Bohemian church powers is, as a matter of fact, the war score cost versus other religions. That's why you take it, basically. So, enjoy, have fun, and convert C Catholic Europe to this really odd colored Hussite faith. Bye for now.